All right, next up, um, I want to jump back into the abstract and, and start talking to you guys a little bit about color and analysis. Um, one of the, the strongest paths forward that Grasshopper has is the ability to actually analyze geometry, you know, mathematically or otherwise. So um, this is like your, your first primer of analysis tools and how color integrates into, um, into Grasshopper. So we're, we're going to go back to like a simple basic surface and we're going to subdivide it and then we're going to analyze the, the, the actual panels. Um, well, sort of kind of analyze. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're going to analyze it. Um, so, uh, and it's going to be uh, a tractor point based. Okay, so it sort of kind of relates to what we just did. So if you could, um, let's just create a quick surface and I think uh, I'm going to stay in the top view for this one. I like to turn my grid off for this kind of assignment too. Um, and I don't believe it needs to be, you know, actually square. It could just be any kind of quadrilateral like this. And then reference that surface in using a surface param. And uh, ideally, you'd turn that layer off in Rhino as well. So um, I, I need to break this down and uh, I'm just going to do that the same way that I have been doing it and that's uh, using isotrim which you guys should all recall by now is going to also require my divide domain squared. So the surface goes into the surface input, surface into your um, I base domain and then your, your uh, S domain output into your D domain input. Um, feel free to create as many or as few subdivisions as you wish. Um, it doesn't really matter. I just like to put sliders here just for argument's sake. <clears throat> now, um, what we're going to do is take a point somewhere in space in Rhino, right? So something like that, okay? I put a point on the surface somewhere or near the surface. It doesn't really matter if it's on the surface or near the surface, but um, <clears throat> the, what am I trying to say? Oh, so we need to uh, analyze its location per every um, subdivided part of the surface. So, um, yeah, am I doing this right? I think so, because this comes out as individual surfaces, right? Okay, so uh, surface analysis and area is going to allow us to find all of the individual centroids of each of these um, panels that we subdivided, and then we're going to test its location per the location of the point that we created. And let me move it off to the side a little bit so it's easier to see. Um, I need to go to vector and point, and I need to test it using closest point. So the uh, centroid output is going to plug into the point input, and then we're going to reference our attractor point into the C input. Okay, so that'll give us the distance, which by now you guys are used to this. And, and we're working in a, a totally flattened list right now, so this isn't really anything new. <coughs> um, what I do need to show you that is new is the idea of converting surfaces and subdivisions and stuff to meshes. Okay, um, the, the reason is when you go to the mesh panel, we're going to use a tool called Mesh Colors, and I know I briefly used this with you guys before, um, but the way that this is going to work is it's going to create a color pattern to a mesh object, and a mesh object has many facets to it as a mesh, so um, we can do that using something um, rather clever, which is essentially the, the gradient tool. Okay, so I think I showed you guys a color swatch before where it just changes the geometry to be a certain color. Did I in this class? I think I did. Um, 
So the gradient tool is near the color swatch. It's actually this one right here, gradient. So the, uh, the color input here is really important because it says color pattern. And it's creating a pattern um, of eight different colors. And so if I take this definition here and I plug it in, you're going to see, um, oh, it, it won't give you a, it won't give you a readout until this has an input. But um, let's set that input now. Um, first and foremost, the, the way that this is going to function is by creating a lower limit of the gradient range, which means the number list that you feed it, right? This number list spans from, you know, something in the teens to something in the 30s, maybe you're able to delimit the extents of what the gradient will actually cover. Everything lower than or above that particular limit is going to just be the uh, gradient's end point color. Does that make sense? It's creating a boundary with a domain for colorization. Um, <clears throat> so the way that we control this is if we want to just have our gradient colorize the entire thing with whatever colors I have here, you know, smoothly all the way across, what I need to do is find that boundary because my lower limit is going to be the lowest number in the list and my upper limit is going to be the highest number in the list. And so we can do that under math and domain using bounds. The list of numbers. numbers yeah so whatever those numbers are if I right now my point isn't at a zero but if I move it over here there is no point in this list that is exactly in the same place as that point so there won't be a zero does that make sense <clears throat> okay now um, so what bounds does is it grabs a domain Right, so it gives us the domain output, which has both numbers built into it. So we need both numbers broken apart separately. And so just like pretty much anything else in Grasshopper, we have the ability to deconstruct that domain to its lowest and highest number. That's also under the domain menu, um, under deconstruct domain. So when you plug deconstruct domain in, the... Um, the start of your domain and the end of your domain are individually selectable. And so, uh, simply put, the start of your domain is going to be your lower limit, and the end of your do domain is going to be your upper limit. Um, and the only other part that you need to be aware of that might not be so um, clear right off the bat is what the parameter is. So the parameter is essentially saying that... Um, for every single index value that I'm applying this to in the mesh function, um, I'm going to apply this parameter value in the gradient. Does that make sense? It's kind of like you're blending two lists now, except one list is a list of colors. So um, anyway, let's let's just do that. But basically, the the distances are what's going to be your t. Those are your parameters. So it's your numerical magnitude, meaning it's the position along the gradient line that defines what color each of those items is going to be. <clears throat> now there's uh, one more thing we have to do here. We have to give it a mesh. And um, the important thing to know is that the mesh is something that borrows the properties of the subdivided surface in order to generate a new surface. Okay, so the surface itself is not getting colored. We're creating a mesh that is going to receive the color that mimics or, or uh, emulates the original surface. So that's found, um, I forget what menu. Uh, it's under uh, mesh, utility, I think. Mesh UV is what I'm looking for. Mesh surface. Mesh surface, is it? No. Yes. Yes, this is it. Um, so it just creates a surface UV mesh, and that's, that's important because 
what you're doing is you're breaking down a particular uh, surface into UV coordinates. So you can borrow those properties and break down your mesh uh, accordingly. <coughs> um, so with that said, uh, you need to plug in the surface geometry, that's this. And it has some default values, a 5 and a 5, but I'm going to give it the U and the V that matches my divide. And then um, the very last thing is we're going to have to plug the mesh into the mesh colors, but there's one small, small little thing we're going to have to do differently. So you'll, you'll see it kind of change. Um, I would like you to turn off all of your old stuff, and this is essentially the surface that you're creating right now. Um, but the one small change we have to make is that the UV of the mesh counts differently than the UV of the surface. And um, basically it's, I, in my opinion, it's, I feel like it's, the best way to describe it would be that it's kind of similar to the difference between a series and um, a range, where uh, a series is creating steps and a range, well, no, that's different. Uh, generating a list, I should say. Oh, well. Um, Basically, you just need to uh, x minus 1 on both the u and v because this number needs to be less than, one less than the surface itself. Okay, x minus 1. There you go. So um, basically what you've just created is a color texture map that's going to measure the intensity or position of that particular point along the surface. So uh, likewise, up here in the um, uh, get rid of that. I forget how to get rid of these. There we go. Um, so uh, I always forget the functionality of this thing. I forget how to get in that. Well, I'll just use more of the defaults anyway. I created too many of these. Dang. Get out. There we go. Uh, if you go to presets, there are a bunch of preset options here in the list. And so you could change it to like this uh, zebra color or you can change it. Oh, the zebra one doesn't want to work very well, huh? I guess it's not enough subdivisions. Let's see if we uh, increase the number of subdivisions here, if that's going to work a little better. Let's see if I do 50 subdivisions. I'll plug that into U and V. And then the mesh will borrow the same properties. There you go. So the more subdivisions it is, the, the more accurate it's going to be with complex um, color patterns. Um, I can change it to a rainbow color, something like that. Okay, so um, why is this valuable? So the cool thing about this, and particularly, particularly this one right here, because it's going from blue to red, um, is you can use this as an analysis tool for a number of different things. So for instance, um, when you see stuff that's happening in like Ladybug, uh, it's one of the environmental analysis tools, you can actually measure the solar heat gain on the side of the building, and it'll render blue where it's receiving very little sunlight uh, and radiation and generating very, very little heat, and it'll be red where it's receiving a lot of sunlight and generating a lot of heat. Okay, so this is just like the, the very basic primer version of, of how that kind of thing begins to work. Okay, um, what questions do you have before... Um, I make sure you're all caught up, and then we can kind of do a few other things with this. What's Ladybug? Ladybug is a plugin. Um, you actually see it up here. You should have it installed. It's uh, where is it? There, Ladybug. So all these things are are um, analysis tools. They're mostly weather analysis tools, like weather, sun, you know, environmental stuff. Um, 
So it'll measure your sun position and calculate you know, different times of the year based on cloud coverage, how much sunlight is actually hitting your building, and you can measure what the heat gain is going to be, whether or not it's comfortable. Mesh UV? Mesh UV is under uh, mesh utility and it's mesh surface. Yeah, that one's a little confusing. Okay, uh, give me a moment to come around and, and make sure you're all caught up.